Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. And we're going to continue our discussion of relationships. In order to build a successful relational database application, it all starts with relating your tables correctly to achieve the benefits of a relational database, which boil down to minimizing redundant data, which in turn improves the accuracy, integrity, and reliability of your information. So it all starts with having successful relationships built between your tables. And in order to do that, it's very helpful to study a properly designed relational database, such as the one in the Northwind Traders sample database. I want to address one-to-many relationships. Those are the heart of a relational database. Sometimes you'll hear about one-to-one -one relationships, and they are very rare. But let me give you an example. Let's say we have a table of information about employees that's very sensitive, such as their emergency contact. We might want to make a new table called employee emergency contacts and build a one-to-one -one relationship between the employees table and the emergency contacts table because one employee can only have one emergency contact. So I've created this little table called emergency contact. I'm going to drag it into my relationship screen a one-to-one -one relationship would link the primary key fields. Now, they don't have to be named the same thing, but if one employee can only have one emergency contact, we would connect the tables on the employee ID field. We go ahead and enforce referential integrity, note the one-to-one -one relationship, and create it. Again, this is very rare because it begs the question, why don't we just put all the fields in the employees table? Well, there are several reasons, even though they're rare, for breaking fields in a one-to-one -one relationship into two tables. And those reasons would be if you want to secure these fields in a different way than these fields, or if these fields are very rarely used, then every time we touch the employees table, maybe we don't want to drag along the, the processes that require pulling in other fields or third reason might be that we have over 255 fields in a table. So there's a security reason, there's a performance reason, and there's also just the reason that in Access, at least, you're limited to 255 fields in a table. If you get more than that, you have to build a second table with a one-to-one -one relationship. The other relationship that's often discussed is a many-to-many -many relationship. And this is a tricky concept because if I were to ask you the question, do many-to-many -many relationships exist in this database application? The answer would be yes. But you do not create a many-to-many -many relationship like you create a one-to-one -one or a one-to-many relationship. A many-to-many -many relationship exists when two tables have a one-to-many relationship to the same table, and that exists several times in this database. For example, one order can have many order details or line items, and one product can be listed in many order details. So orders and products would, by definition, have a many-to-many -many relationship. The same thing would be true of customers and order status. One customer can have many orders, and one order status can be listed on many orders. Hence, customers and order status have a many-to-many -many relationship. Third example would be employees and customers. They each have a one-to-many relationship with the orders table. One employee can have many orders, and one customer can have many orders. Hence, employees and customers have a many-to-many -many relationship. Now, I'm going to delete the emergency contact table here from the relationship screen just to clean this up a bit because I often get the question, how do I know how to set up my one-to-many relationships? Well, it's built on business rules. And here is a good example of how this relationship screen, it's telling me that one employee can make many orders and one customer can have many orders. Now, if your business was designed in a different way, if the customers were all attached to a particular employee, then you want one employee related to many customers and one customer making many orders. What this design is telling me is that when the customer places an order, they could get one of many different employees. The employee, so the customers are not directly 
related to employees. One employee is not responsible for a particular set of customers because if they were, we would relate one employee to many customers instead of one employee to many orders. So business rules here are telling me that we probably have customers just calling in and making orders and whatever employee is free on the phone is taking the order. So again, is this right or is this wrong? It's based on your business rules. And knowing your business helps you set these relationships up correctly. Thank you.